Today we're going to do a design system review. I like to take a look at other design systems as I'm building design systems and see what I can learn and what can I unpack for them. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Audi. Audi doesn't have a Figma library available yet. They have a sketch library. Uh, Figma library is not available, so we're not going to be able to pop in there and see how those components are built, but they have a really good React, I believe it's React Native library that we can uh, take a look at or just React library and kind of poke around and see what is in there. What are we looking for, right? When I'm looking at other design systems, whether I'm building a design system or working in documentation, I'm trying to see what other folks are doing in the design system world. Um, how are they documenting things? What are some of the things that they might be adding that I'm either currently working on or um, trying to implement into my own system? So let's take a quick look at the Audi design system here. So we've got a beautiful reference site here. Um, and this design system site, um, it's interesting because one of the first things I notice is it's not just the UI components. It's the entire Audi brand and Audi ecosystem. So you go into brand appearance, it talks about the progressive premium uh, brand that they're trying to have. Uh, you can go into the basics here and under, and you can take a look at their logos um, and see how they can be used. Variable type logo, which I didn't know they had, um, showing how that gets used across the board. You can go into the user interface guidelines and really see how the user interface is used in different areas. You can even go into uh, brands and space and take a look at how the cars should be displayed or the buildings uh, should be used. And it's kind of cool how these clear lines and flat surfaces also apply to their user interface when you start thinking about maybe their block-based approach. You can kind of see how those two things are melded together. And that's pretty cool that it's all in one spot. So as a designer, you can kind of see how this design philosophy is carried across the board, um, whether it's physical space, on the vehicles themselves, or in the products that we get to work on in the design systems that we're building. Uh, so scrolling down in the user interface area, um, this is a great screenshot. I love these shots. If you're ever like pitching design systems to your company or stakeholders, shots like this from other design systems to really show how versatile they are and how they are on the iPad app, on the watch, on the phone, on the login, on the marketing site, and kind of how that gets utilized across the board. That's a super effective way to kind of communicate the value, the efficiency that's gained through using a design system. Another thing that's really cool is they talk about some of their design principles, right? So we're going to design for small viewports first. So the phone or tablet, smallest one first, and then moving our way up. We're thinking about block-based approach, uh, subdivided into blocks, vertically and horizontally, clear structure with the content there. Uh, great example of how they break those up and think about that. Um, titling and how we are thinking about means of titles, whether those titles go, uh, and where they are in these different views. Super effective way to communicate collections and things like that. Uh, separation of element guidelines, how we talk about these elements and how they're being separated. So you just kind of don't, you're not guessing when you're doing these designs. You have these sort of principles right here. I love having the design principles in the UI kit itself. Now let's take a look at their component library. We're going to dive in. There's a little video here that we could play and watch kind of introduces into the design system now do i expect every design system reference guide or site to have that probably not um you know not everyone has the budget that audi does but kind of a cool way to get you know some, somebody excited about using this design system um you know we're gonna take a look at the core components so adopting core components they have uh react components in that react library and we'll dive into that in a second but it's cool that they pull all that stuff out here into the references site itself some things that i noticed is they scale their type uh, based on the button size, which I thought was interesting. Um, so sometimes button size will change, but the type won't change. And that's kind of cool that they have that in there. And there's some you know, other interesting scaling things that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I love that the buttons have this little animation in here. And if you go into the animation section, you can kind of see why they have that animation and what its purpose is um, in there. There's another animation here, and speaking of animations, there's a couple of animations that, um, for example, when I go to this text button here, this arrow moves over, but I couldn't find any documentation on like why or how or what is the curves for that it just doesn't exist. Uh, similar to when we go to cards, um, there's really not a good explanation on why this photo card moves and the rest of these don't. Um, so just something that I noticed in the system that uh, 
I'd like to know why this does this, or at least tell me where where that is. Um, when we go back up to basics, we're going to jump into here real quick and talk about colors. Uh, this is really interesting that there is no really primary color. Uh, there's no hierarchy between black, white, and red. Um, obviously, you want to use those in um, uh, in an effective way and not being too colorful. But I thought that was interesting in the examples they showed here of how they did that uh, is is pretty cool. And um, I love that in the brand side of it, we get all the different color codes in here, everything across the board. There's a lot of times where, you know, like somebody will ask for a CM, uh, CMYK or a Pantone when we're working on something and we don't necessarily have that. So having that in this design system is really good and having that available to us and, and not doing it for the colors that we don't need, right? These gray levels are mostly interface related, so we don't need that for those um, across the board. So let's take a look at the global components. Um, so this is their React library. Um, this is all done in Storybook. Um, if you're building a design system, Storybook is a place to put all those live components. You can actually see how they work and see how they function. This is like the real um, design system bits. Um, really calling out the objectives and benefits, why design systems are good, consistency, collaboration, efficiency, uh, how to get started in the design system. Uh, so Audi kits for Figma, recommended, not available yet, so we can't download those yet. Uh, they talk about the swap library. So this is really helpful on how to start getting your designs up and running if you are using their library. Uh, we can get into brand identity and the way they break down their colors for their system. Um, tokens, um, uh, this is really good because it breaks down all the different design tokens that are available to me, how they're named, um, why they're named certain ways. So right color UI, primary light, color UI, primary dark, all those different secondaries. I love having the two different theme colors there. This is something that I think is really interesting too. Um, speaking of themes is a lot of times I'll see um, design systems that don't necessarily have like a, for these accent colors, like a destructive, a success and a warning, they won't have a light and dark version. So if you're working on a two-tone design where you're using light and dark, similar to like Audius, um, you can have a light and dark version of those colors so that when let's say an error happens on a dark view, we're using the dark one instead of the light one. And that's a really good way to kind of have that anchored in, keep it consistent, make it feel good on those different backgrounds. Um, same thing with the interactions here, right? Interaction primary, active dark. So on dark, we're using an inter, uh, a white button as our base and then a black button when it's on white. Uh, so this is really good separating those interaction colors from other things. So this can be used for buttons, uh, radial, checkboxes, things like that, things that we interact with. Another cool thing that I really liked is the spacing guide. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how would I build this in Figma? What would I do with this spacing guide? Uh, could I do this with variables? Would that be too much for designers to use? Or would that be awesome because we're scaling one design and we can just switch the variables out? I don't know. I'm excited to try some stuff out like that. The thing that I thought was interesting is the spacing curve here and how it adjusts over time or scales of size. Uh, so this is kind of cool showing the X factor and the methodology behind that and really how that design system um, spacing guide gets applied. Uh, so overall, like really, really cool that they have that stuff in there. Now we've got uh, regional components and global components. Uh, I thought regional components was an interesting call out, uh, you know, for the North America region. Let's take a look here real quick. Um, Oh, maybe they don't. Oh, nothing in here yet. Um, but for example, you might have regional components. So it's kind of cool that's calling it out. One thing that we do in the Figma side on um, design systems is if we have local components that are components to a specific product or things like that, we might have those there. So I could see some of that um, in here as well. The cool thing with this, though, is we can actually take a look at the buttons themselves and we can see the different variations and use. Um, all available here. You know, we can see I get the I can't click here, but I can click here, uh, the loader here and all of that and how that brings that up. But I can actually go into the uh, properties myself and make some of those changes and kind of see how that uh, is affected here, uh, which is really cool. I think this is one of the best parts of having a design system 
uh, reference site that is live code. You can actually go in and make all these adjustments um, and I can see what that did over here. Only downside is I wish it would pull in a, um, this would come down with me as I'm making those changes. So I'm gonna see how those changes go across the board. Um, the other thing that I really like is form group. Sometimes I don't see this a lot um, in design systems, but like what is the structure and uh, and the way we should put our forms together uh, with label text and required and things like that. So this just helps designers when they have to create maybe complex forms for audio might be a sign of form. Maybe it's a lease form, things like that, that they might have to do. Oh, one other thing with buttons that I thought was really good too is um, it's not just the core design, it's some of the UX copy too, right? We're not gonna use okay in the button or uh, especially in case of error, errors are never just okay. Um, so I think this is really helpful when we're working through our designs, we can start to think about what the uh, buttons need to say and start to think through some of that UX copy. I would like to see some examples of no-nos or uh, you know, things we shouldn't do, or because this is in uh, German and in English, uh, talk a little bit about localization and what that, what does that mean between the two different languages that they're going to use? Um, uh, you know, a small utilization of space uh, for a longer word is going to be really tough. And how would they handle that? So that'd be kind of a cool thing uh, to see in here because they do have that sort of available on the, on the website. You can see that stuff in, in German. Um, Overall, great reference site, great uh, design system across the board. I'm excited to get into their Figma kit once it's available to see how they actually built those systems out and how they kind of hook everything up for us designers to do. Uh, my big key takeaways is brand new interface, single guide. I really like that everything was together. We didn't have to go into different spots or different documents or kind of look for all that stuff. It was all in one spot, which I think was really helpful. Uh, the utilization guidelines and storybook. How do we uh, write good copy for our buttons? What are the things that we shouldn't do? Um, the form uh, grouping, things like that, I think is really helpful. And then really light and dark theme color adjustments. I think that's something that can be missed. Um, something that we don't think about very often, uh, especially like when it comes to accessibility and things like that. Uh, so I think that was, that was uh, really cool. Um, well, like I said, I love diving into these design systems, helps me learn about design systems and what I can do to improve as we're building. If you're interested in learning about design systems, uh, we do have a design system course in Figma uh, that you can check out at shipright.design. It also has a free UI kit, so you can kind of see how we think about design systems and how we build those. Uh, we're um, updating our course with new stuff, especially with the new Figma release. But like I said, my name is Billy Sweetman uh, here at Headway. If this is something that's interesting, uh, send me some design system. I'm definitely excited to take a look at more, record some videos, and give some of my thoughts.